Friday Morning Conversation with Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey Bobby. Hello. Hey, what's behind you? Is that like specific art to a project or is that just like the Jetsons? Like what is that? That was from an uh, animated cartoon I did years ago. It was just um, just some of the art from that. That's cool. Yeah, it kind of looks like the Jetsons meets Gwen. So now it makes sense. <laughs> hey, Blake, it does look like Blake, I want to push you off for a second and just talk to Gwen. Is that cool? I don't blame you. You've talked to me plenty of times. That's true. I'm that's excited true. to talk to you guys. This well, is so different. Well, thanks. And I'm a massive and have been a massive No Doubt fan forever. Um, what? You, you, listen, I saw you when you were opening for Bush. Stop. No, I, I went to a Bush concert and saw you guys back in like way, way forever. So I've been a fan for a long time. But I guess my question is when you guys are getting back together at Coachella, which is a massive deal to somebody like me. But do you, have you guys started rehearsing yet? Or do you need to rehearse? No, we haven't even spoken. I mean, we literally <laughs> had like one, one Zoom, and um, but we're we're about ready to get into it. It's gonna be. I feel like it's gonna be like riding a bike, and we're gonna be. I think we're gonna be laughing a lot when we look at each other. That I'm going to be, and um, it's just been very bizarre because we were excited about it, but the the vibe and the energy and excitement that we're, I feel that's out there that's uh, you can't see it, but you can feel it is beyond what I could imagine. So it's pretty it's pretty wild. Yeah, for me, it's super exciting. Usually, I don't give a crap who's headlining a festival that I'm not going to go to. And also, I'm not going to watch it online. <laughs> However, they do show the stream, and I will watch you guys play because to me, like that, that's super cool. That's awesome. I'm Thank you. I, we are excited, and I, I'm excited to get back in, in rehearsals with those guys. They're very meticulous. I'm, it's going to be like really bizarre learning some of the old songs again and – and you know, it there be just it will just be no doubt songs, which will be completely different for me as well. So it's exciting. Blake, do you feel but not as exciting about what's happening right now? Okay, see, except I was gonna say, Blake, do you feel <laughs> left out? I know I was gonna get back over to it. Bobby, trust me, I mean, when they made the announcement that they were getting back together for the show, all of a sudden I started having people check in just to say hi with me <laughs> that I haven't heard from in years. Just yeah. say, hey, man, it's thinking of you. Let's ha let's get together. <laughs> <laughs> knowing where this is going, so uh, trust me, I know. Well, I'll direct this one to you, uh, Blake. Purple Iris says we've we've been playing it. You guys are doing another song together. The, the times that you have, they've been super successful. Uh, just why again? Why this song? And do you feel the pressure for it to to you know crush again? Uh, well, of course. I mean, you always feel you know pressure at some level. I mean, you know, I think the pressure that we feel this time around is just because we love this song so much. I mean, it's, it's a thing that, that Gwen wrote with some friends of ours and uh, we just decided to run with it and, and we're having a blast. We just love the song, you know, eventually you guys will be able to do a whole show of just your songs. I mean, you got I was thinking two, about that. two number I was like, ones and you have this one coming now. I mean, how many do you need to actually do that tour? <laughs> a lot more, but it's but it's fun to come up on stage with Blake. And the, I started the first few times I ever did it. I was like, it was just, it was so different, like being in front of that audience. Um, and I, it felt like, wow, I'm on Blake Shelton's stage. It just kind of made me feel like I don't know, new all over again. Like it, like nervous and excited, and like having to prove myself and all the things that I've I've done a million times. But like it, it but with my best friend. So it's really fun to have another song, especially something that I wrote that I I didn't write this as a duet. I just wrote it, and it's as and I'd been writing, trying to write and try to find my voice right now, who I am, you know, as a record, as a as a writer, right, you know, for a long time, like since. Kobe. Yeah, forever. Me and Blake both like kind of land in that familiar land of like yacht rock. That's like where we both are like, we love that music and we'll sit for hours and be like, have you, do you remember this one? Do you know this one? It was a one hit wonder, whatever it is, right? The fact that he l liked it enough because I respect Blake so much with, when it comes to music and he wanted to be on it because I actually was, I would never ask Blake to be on one of my songs. Like that would just be weird. You know what I mean? But. <laughs> But I have no absolutely no problem asking you to be on my songs. I don't know, but it's it's different. But for some reason, he he like I texted him and he was like, "Okay, I go just come try being on it." And he got up out of the chair and came over and 20 minutes later he was like singing on the demo. So, we're excited about it. And so you guys sing in the same studio cuz a lot of times you don't, but they also the people aren't actually, you know, living together. But you guys went to the studio at the same time and sang together or no? 
we tracked it together and and uh and then went back and and sang it together we even we're going to try to like sing it at the same time together, but that almost gave Scott Hendricks a stroke. So <laughs> he decided to split it up there, but we were together. In fact, Gwen, I couldn't, Gwen's really good at harmony. So she was helping me find my, my parts and stuff that day. Where do you guys fall in the old Venn diagram of music that you both love? Like what shared music do you both love the most? You know what I've learned? We've learned a, a lot from each other. I think, uh, you know, the, that sweet spot she's talking about with, with the Yacht Rock thing. But, you know, we've learned a lot of music from each other. And, and one of my favorite time periods that, that I've been able to expose Gwen to is like that Steve Warner, The Weeknd. Uh, but, you know, there's a, t there's a ton of stuff like Bread or Ambrosia or Fleetwood Mac. There's a, there's a ton of those bands and artists like that that we just we never get tired of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On with Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani. I do want to talk to Blake about Toby Keith, and I know they toured together, and even a throwback video that I've seen from, from both of those guys on TikTok. So Blake Shelton, Gwen Stefani on the show, talking to them, and we'll also play their new song, Purple Iris, is coming up. Bobby Bones. Bobby Bones show. Let's go. Hey, it's Blake Shelton. Friday Morning Conversation with Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani. In the past week or so, a video has come up on my TikTok about both of you, both like throwback videos. There was one whenever, uh, Blake, you were about to have a number one with Austin or was about to reach, uh, achieve some landmark. And someone was like, the hardest thing about that song, Blake, and again, you had mullet and cowboy hat, you know what you look like, and is that you're going to have to sing it your whole career because it seems like it's a pretty hard song to sing. And then with Gwen, with you, there was one that popped up on mine where you were playing, it was like your first ever TV appearance with No Doubt, like on a public access channel or something. Oh my gosh, that is, that, that, I can't believe you watched that. Whenever... <laughs> That because you're not putting the stuff up. Old fans are finding old stuff. Do you guys ever? Are you, are you ever on TikTok or social media and come across some of this old stuff of of your own and like, holy crap! I cannot believe I don't. I haven't thought about that in forever. I am. I'm kind of like Dora from Finding Nemo. It's like things kind of. I don't remember anything, so I'm like in the moment, right in the moment. But um, that is like me forever. Like I've never like changed from the same style or the things that I love, you know and to now fast forward and be talking to Bobby Bones from L.A. with Blake Shelton. It's well, like, what? I'm the complete opposite. Thank God I changed <laughs> my my style and my appearance and stuff over the years. Don't you agree, Bobby? Uh, you're a quite the uh, dashing gentleman now, I will admit. Oh. <laughs> hey, Blake, we talked about Toby a bunch this week with uh, Toby Keith passing away, and it seems, you know, everybody has a great Toby Keith story or 10, but I know you guys – you know, have a history as well. I don't know. Can you give me something that, you know, makes you smile when you think back about Toby? Toby was a, he was a tough nut to crack, you know, to, to get to know. And, and, but once you were in that inner, inner circle with him, you, you could do no wrong almost. And, and, and he was just that kind of guy. And it, I was out on tour with him for, I don't know, I think a year and a half, maybe two years solid. Like we were just out there with him the whole time. And, and over time, you know, we started to develop a little bit of a relationship. We're both from, from Oklahoma. And so that was, that was kind of our uh, connection that we had early on. Then he, then he, he made me uh, put together a basketball team with my band and crew, whatever I had out there, because he loved to play basketball and he wanted to play every single day. And, and so we did. And of course, you can imagine me out there, and and it, and it only got worse from me with my band and crew. But so they just killed us every day. Uh, but we became buddies uh, over time, and and to the point where you know, almost like a like a little brother type thing. You know, Toby was Toby was the king of, of tough love, and <laughs> I remember one day I, I told this uh, when, at at a. At a thing we honored him at last fall there at the at the Opry, the the People's Choice thing, but it really sums up, uh, you know, Toby's sense of humor because uh, he could he could be ruthless in, in a in a funny way, and and it was right in the, in the middle of, of the uh, the shock in the all days, and and he he was just the king of, of country music at the time, and and the CMA Awards came and went, and I think he was up for. Yeah, and who who knows a, bu a bunch of awards and and he didn't win any any of them you know and that was just 
Toby, Toby almost never won awards, you know, and it was, uh, I think it, it, in that moment, I don't want to say it upset him, but it would get under his skin a little bit. And I knew that I could say something to him about it and it was piss him off, you know? And so the, the, the next, the following weekend, I saw him out there and I said, Hey man, you know, because at the time I was, I was a baby artist. I said, you know, someday if I ever do get nominated for, for any awards, man, I hope it's against you. <laughs> and, and I thought it was too. And, and, and he literally without a beat, skipping a beat said to me, he goes, you know why I brought you out here on tour with me? And I said, no, he goes, because I wanted to prove to the industry that I really don't need an opening act, oh. which, which was so true because every, night, every night I walked out there and there, you know, it would be like 15 people in a 20,000 seat amphitheater. And then at some point in the 20 minutes I left the stage and he came on, it would be completely sold out packed. So he, he was dead on about that, but he, he was just always always that guy and and i just i loved him i looked up to him and and he's he would have done anything for for a friend and you can ask his his close circle of friends that i mean there's amazing stories of 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 toby's loyalty and his generosity and just his heart and he came across as this big you know tough uh hard-headed guy which he was but there was also a, another side of toby keith that uh, if you ever got to see it, it was it was unbelievably generous. Well, we appreciate you guys' time, and thanks for sharing that story. And we're going to play Purple Irises again, which we've been playing it all morning. And congratulations on Thank the you, Bobby. early success of it. And uh, good to talk to you guys, and hopefully we'll see you in person sometime soon. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. All right. See you guys. See ya. Come on now. Bobby Bones.